Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist with a plant science minor. And in this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're going back to the basics of gardening and we're going to look at what it takes to be a gardener in Canada. So this is the ultimate beginner guide to gardening in Canada. If you are new to gardening, then this video is for you. Now, if you are from the US and you are a cold climate gardener, this video will apply to you as well. So this would technically also be a cold climate gardener's beginner guide. So if you have a winter time, then this video is tailored to what you guys need. And this was completely spurred by a DM that I got on Instagram. So thank you so much for sending me that. I'm not going to name names for privacy reasons, but if you guys wanna check me out on Instagram, please do. I post on there pretty much every single day, whether that be on Instagram itself or in the stories. I will leave a link for that down below. Now I am asking all my seasoned vets. So every one of you that are on this channel every single three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at one o'clock central time, you know who you are. Please let the beginners in the comments know where you're from and your method of gardening because you guys are the pros for your area and i think it's going to help a lot of people and so many of you have different versions of gardening that you do so please put your tips and tricks down below if you have them it's going to help out everyone who decides to watch this video if that is the case i'll be sure to pin the comments that have the zone and experiences to the top of the comment section as much as I possibly can, as much as YouTube will allow me to. So without further ado, let's jump into how to garden in Canada or just how to garden in cold climates. So step one of being a beginner gardener in Canada comes from knowing your zone. And while knowing your zone isn't hugely important to gardening, despite popular belief, it is something that's going to give you some guidelines. So some guidelines that you will get in response to knowing what your zone is will include things such as your last frost free date, the start of your frost period, and then also things such as your the number of growing degree days in your area. And these are the important factors when determining zone. Now, if you're looking for perennial vegetables or perennial flowers, you're going to need to know your zone regardless because it's going to help you choose plants that will survive and thrive year after year. So a good rule of thumb is knowing your zone and then staying on your zone or even a zone or two lower. If you are in a zone three, such as me, you can transfer into zone two perennials with very little difficulty. And it just kind of works that way the whole way up. Now, if you are in USDA zone, you're going to want to add one. So I'm a USDA zone four. Um, if you are in a zone five Canadian, you have a USDA zone of six, just to give you an idea. So you are going to want to find that out. Check out the Gardening in Canada blog for more resources on how to determine your zone, how to find it and what your zone may be for your area. Once you determine this, you can then decide when to start your seeds. And while starting seeds isn't 100% necessary as a gardener, it's kind of a rite of passage and it's going to make you feel really great about yourself. So things that you can look at are flowers, tomatoes, peppers, cabbage, celery, romaine lettuce, herbs, for example, different spices, that sort of thing can be started early. The key here is not to start too early. If you start too early and you don't have the proper setup, you can end up with leggy or sick plants. Prime example is what I'm doing currently with my pumpkin plant. As you can see, my pumpkin plant is not only flowering, but it is incredibly leggy. And this is just my own personal experiment that I'm doing where I'm trying to determine whether or not you can grow without intense light indoors. Turns out you can't. <laughs> and this is just on a windowsill. So I just wanted to see what would happen um, in this case, but this is something or what it will look like if you start a plant too soon in the growing season. Now, later, honestly, is usually better. And I have some growing guides 
um, that you can download and print out. Well, once you know your zone, you can then actually grab the Gardening in Canada growing guides or seed starting guides to give you a better idea of when to start your seeds inside. Keep in mind some plants don't transfer as well into the outdoors after being started indoors. So those ones you're going to want to direct sow. And again, I list those on that worksheet. The other resource that you can use is actually the Gardening in Canada vegetable garden planner. So you can download this planner both off Etsy or for free on the Connected to the Land podcast page. I will leave the links for both of those down below as well. But this is going to give you an idea of when to start your seeds. Keep in mind, if you don't have the lighting and you don't have the space, a later start is better. Try not to push the bounds too far because it never works out in your favor. I can promise you that. A really great example is I love petunias and I start petunias every single year. So these guys, I started um, mid-February and as you can see, I've already got some flowers. So I left this flower on here to show you guys. However, if I do have plants indoors, I do remove the flowers no matter how much I want to look at them because I want them to focus on foliage growth. So remove your buds. If you do start plants indoors early, you want them to fo focus on vegetation only and less on reproductive flowering. The reason for this is because if a plant is able to fulfill its life cycle, especially ones that aren't genetically modified or engineered, they need to be deadheaded to make the plant think it has not yet reproduced and needs to continue producing foliage in hopes of producing flowers. So deadheading indoors and out is essential. So in a cold climate gardening scenario or in a Canadian gardening scenario, you want to make sure that your last frost date is ingrained into your mind. So for Saskatchewan in zone three, Last frost free date is, or my first frost free date is May 25th. And I know this off by heart because it is basically the May long weekend that my frost ends. Now, keep in mind that frost can creep up on you over after that time. And I've seen frost in my area into the first week and sometimes even second week of June. So my rule of thumb, honestly, especially when it comes to transplanting outdoors, most plants you're transplanting outside enjoy high heat. So things like tomato plants, pepper plants, celery, romaine, lettuce, they don't enjoy too much of a cold snap. So keep them inside or keep them in the greenhouse until about two weeks after your frost free date. And this is a rule of thumb I follow. Other people will have different methods of dealing with a late frost and this can even consist of planting the plants and then maybe having some sort of protective barrier such as a mini uh, greenhouse or even just a hot tunnel or a high tunnel, low tunnel over top of the crop or in some cases people will leave the plants sit and they will cover them with blankets if there is a risk of frost. Now, keep in mind that even if you do use those methods, if it is dipping below, um, I'd say even 10 degrees Celsius outdoors, you do run the risk of shocking the plant and shock will stunt growth. So you may notice for that first two, three weeks of transplanting outdoors that you have really slow progression in growth. And this is most likely because you've shocked the plant either due to the transplant process or due to the fact that it is getting cool during the nights. The days aren't so much the issue. It's the nighttime that we have to worry about. So if you can keep them indoors, keep them, um, in a greenhouse and during the day over the, those two weeks where you're waiting for it's, it being time to plant outside, consider using those days as hardening off time. So this will still keep you busy in the garden. It'll still keep you active, but you're gonna wanna make sure you harden off your plants because we are in a Canadian climate. Gardening in Canada is an extreme sport. So plants need to be hardened off properly because temperature changes, sun changes, atmospheric pressure changes will all cause stress on your plant. So when you're moving them outside, start looking into how to harden off 
properly. I have a video on that. I will make a updated video this year when time comes, but be sure to check that out just so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. If you are direct seeding outdoors, whether that be potatoes, onions, uh, onion sets, not the seeds, do not do onion seeds, they have to be the sets, or if you're doing zucchinis, cucumbers, whatever the case is, peas, and you're direct sowing into the ground, you can actually start sowing these um, a week to two weeks before your frost free period date. And the reason for this is because these seeds generally germinate just fine in cooler soils and when they do germinate and come above ground because they're so close to the soil surface the ambient temperature around that hot black soil tends to protect the plant from any form of frost damage not only that but in many cases these plants are semi frost tolerant to a degree so that's something to keep in mind if you want to get a head start in the garden you can go anywhere for a week or two before that last frost free date now if you don't want to do that you can wait until the day of and then get those seeds in the ground which leads me to my second tip if you are doing seeds outdoors then you're going to want to make sure to water every single day and there's going to be people who are going to tell you not to do this but for the entire summer if your pot has drainage if you are in a raised bed if you are on a ground bed you want to water every single day and this is especially important if you do not have a mulch covering because soil evaporates from our soil system so quickly in an outdoor setting combined with the fact that vegetables and flowers are in a very rapid state of growth throughout the growing season they are drastically different than indoor plants you have to treat them like a totally different beast and that means you need to water and you need to water a lot and people are going to tell you water every two three days water every single day I can promise you, if you listen to me, you will have the most unbelievable harvest at the end of the year. If you decide to intermittently water, you will have cracked peppers, you have cracked tomatoes. Like I said, the exception to this is if you are mulching or if you have some sort of system in place to help reduce the rates of evapotranspiration. But that is more of an intermediate topic. If you are a beginner, start with every single day and if you don't want to water every single day then i highly recommend for watering every single day until you get more of a plant or a seedling format after you have more of a seedling format you can back off on the watering if you so choose i don't recommend it but if you so choose you can and when you do do that what you're going to want to do is water thoroughly so at least run the sprinklers or your um, soaker hoses for 30 to 40 minutes at a time every three days and that's going to really soak the profile the whole way through so watering is key the other tip for direct seeding in the garden is thinning and I know this is every gardener struggles with this regardless if you know it's good or bad so thinning is key if you plant things such as lettuce beets, carrots, honestly, any kind of root vegetable, any type of herb, if you plant them in rows, once you get to a couple leaves, three leaves, and you've determined which ones are hardy and gonna do well, you need to thin. If you do not thin your root vegetables, especially, you will have very poor harvest. So thinning is a must. And I know it hurts and it sucks because you are ripping viable plants out of the ground. But trust me, without it, you're going to get very, very low yield. Lastly is determining your sun. So I think people underestimate commonly how much sun is needed for a garden to grow. And full sun is the best sun. Vegetables typically, unless they're like a lettuce or a herb, don't do very well in moderate or mild sun or part shade. They need full blown sun, especially when we're talking about fruit bearing plants. So things like tomatoes, peppers, um, that sort of thing. 
ones you can get away with in low lighting or poor lighting or lettuce, um, basils, like herbs and um, legumes in some cases you can get away with as well. So peas, beans, that sort of thing. But when we're talking about cucumbers, tomatoes, um, peppers, you're going to want to make sure you can provide enough light. So whether that means hacking out some trees, that sort of thing, go wild. Which leads me to my last and final point. Don't stress out. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't start looking at companion planting and soil types and soil amending and soil pH and magnesium calcium deficiencies. Don't get drowned out by that information. Just focus on the watering and the lighting plant spacing, you will be fine. Don't let all the other information cloud your judgment. Gardening is not difficult. The higher level discussions that influencers and stuff like to have, I find personally complicates things because there's so many different directions that that information can go in based on how it's applied. So there's pros and cons to everything. Pick a method, whether it's container, raised bed, hogoculture, it doesn't matter. Try to stay on the less complicated of, the, of them all. So preferably container gardening or raised bed gardening and stick with it and roll with it and see what you get the first year or two. Over time, you can improve and change it, but don't let it cloud your vision when you're starting out. Sunlight, water, and hardening off. Those are literally your main three. And don't put them outside before it's too soon to do so. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you're a cold climate gardener in the US or in the UK, or if you are a Canadian gardener, or if you are nothing in between, because I have quite a few followers from all over the world, from the Philippines and everything. So I know you guys definitely do not have snow unless you're on the side of a mountain. <laughs> Other than that, you don't have snow. So I'm glad that you guys are on this channel as well because I'm sure you're learning lots. If you're ever looking for more information, more resources, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, the website, guardiancanada.net. Literally, I'm on every possible platform you can think of at this point. So be sure to check them all out. They all get different postings of different stuff. I will talk to you guys next time. See ya!